Harwood. Howdy. I need you to write your Tesla Lamb statement. Oh, yeah. I mean, is that not enough? Just honestly. Uh, hey, hey, she's going to want to take it to court. T yeah. Tesla, Tesla stabbed me in the throat. Unfortunately, Cornwood, we're not going to have time to finish our conversation. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we will. What? No. Goodbye. Tessa. <laughs> Tried to kill no, me. No, she didn't. Yeah, Tessa Lamb. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I got. I got. X. What? Yeah. So I got kidnapped by some folks. What you fucking hands up? Oh my god! Oh my god. Up. Drop, drop your gun and radio now. Who? Honestly, nice guys. I mean, they were there. I mean, they weren't. Now they took my shit, but they, they, they didn't keep it. I, I don't know. They, they, they made me get rid of my shit. I should say. And then uh, they kidnapped me. I'm like, okay, here Tessa we go. Tessa Lamb yes. stabbed you. Yeah. So these guys, you know, they were good to me. They were nice to me. They were not rude or whatever. You know, they were being aggressive. But I think it was more so just so I, you know, I don't, I don't shoot a son bitch because obviously, you know, it's, this is me we're talking about. Of course, I will. You know, I, I mean, sword her protector. She was uh, Bass's daughter. And look at you now, as a proud father. I have a daughter who's just so good. I love you. I love you. Well, she's a fucking psycho criminal. Oh, now. Holy like, shit, there Bass's is daughter. I just no remembered. way. I remembered. Holy shit. Oh my. Oh, I, Gordon, keep keep going. I'm writing your statement down. Okay. She told me the Tessa Lamb that you knew died on the on the day Sam Bass died. There was a time when Game Warden <laughs> Tessa Lamb would have taken you to court. Uh huh. And possibly even taken your job for what I observed at the mayor's wedding. But that girl, Game Warden Tessa Lamb, she died the same day Sam Bass did. Oh, yeah, that's true. She yeah. told me yeah. that. And oh, she yeah, said, she went she crazy. Said, that Tessa Lamb is no longer. And, and. She she's like a new person or some shit. Oh my lord! I complete. Oh my god. Okay, so things are. Um, she told you that at the stabbing. Yes. Okay, go ahead, please. And and I was I saw I was I get excited when I see Tessa because I, I love Tessa. She you know she's great. You know she's she'd always been good to me. I always been good to her. And she was she was a fantastic you know officer into eventually being a game warden. Or, I mean she was a ranger the whole time, but you know ranger into being a game warden and all that. I was. I was kind of confused because she took us, or the kidnappers, took me to where the mayor uh, had his wedding reception. You think oh, my Lord. This, is this place saying? is beautiful, by the way. We came up here for a wedding reception because uh, I brought a dolphin to the wedding reception. That's right. Okay, so I brought a dolphin to the wedding reception. Oh, no. And it was, I was okay. a rescue. I said, this is, a, you know, courtesy of the Little Alamo Sheriff's Office, and, you know, yeah. here we go. There's a dolphin. That we're, you know. Hold on, pause, pause. Okay. Uh, Knight, why did you say, oh, no? Do you even remember, Finny? Yeah, he was a rescue. A rescue. Yeah, he was washed up ashore years ago. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I got one! I got one! So it's lying, then. <clears throat> um, I'm going to try to summarize, because this goes deep, um, to like a 60-second. Uh, about five and a half years ago, about six years now, multiple bombs were being planted all around Los Santos, uh, tied to a place called Rooster's Rest. Uh, it, it, let's just say, like, gas station gets blown up, the gang gets pissed off. They start attacking, quote-unquote, civilians. War breaks loose between these two entities. One which is pretty, let's just say, in the shadow, but mostly civilians, and another that's like a street gang. It turns into rocket firing, bombs going off the for hell? like roughly two to three weeks. And... Walking away. 70% uh, of the police department doesn't really give a fuck. Like, they don't see the patterns. They don't get, give a shit about civilian lives, et cetera, et cetera. What the Things shit? continue to escalate. Oh, give us one. Uh, oh, shit. Okay. Snipers, snipers, two, two officers down. We're not sure what's coming where, from. Where, Probably where, 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 where? northeast, northeast, northeast. 
uh, because now we've just got literally just people are shitting rockets out of their ass. They came down the ridge to the west of the checkpoints. Like just coming from God knows where. We then had a the police department uh, blown up in like Polito. We had Mission Row PD, the building that used to stand here, have a bomb planted on it. And literally, I, I, I want you to imagine this, 20 officers on duty, bomb is planted at the ranger station. It's ticking. We know it's there. And all the officers stood there watching as the suspect who planted the bomb drove off as one lone fresh officer that just got graduated from. So then uh, literally no one gives a shit, like is, is the best way I can describe it. Things are going off. People don't want to respond to it because they're like, oh, this is going to not lead to anything. We start and we, I mean, uh, the detective unit at the time, mostly primarily consisting of five officers. We had a lot of information already that let us through phone subpoena and phone triangulations uh, tie together 60 days worth of different phone logs to uncover GPS locations for every incident, subsequently de- leading us to find a handful of suspects those same suspects then planted a bomb at mission row pd in which sam bass uh, attempted to defuse it for some reason are you fucking crazy what are you the bison leave i told you bison leave now i told you bison leave i'm hacking i'm hacking i'm hacking i'm happy i'm hacking And then died. Yeah, I'm not kidding. It's a perma. Best ending I can I can think of, honestly, with K. It's over. And Mr. Bass is dead. We never won in court because affirmative defense wasn't really a thing. And honestly, some of those judges were, uh, well, they ain't around anymore. That death of Bass that day really shook Tessa to the core. Hello? Hey, what are you doing right now? I'm on top of Beaver Bush. What, why? Hello, Game Warden Tessa Lamb. This is Chief oh. Kiki Pat Dragon. No, let me finish. With the emergency medical services, I am calling to inform you of the... Of the... I need units to get on Kiki Pendragon's location right now. Of the passing of Sam Bass. On the west side of SSMC. They're currently taking him to the work. I'm so sorry. I remember she stopped coming on duty. There's Chat. one tower that is, I want to say, just like northwest of the lost compound. There's like an old uh, hunter stand there. And I remember finding their, her there a couple times, just like completely shattered and broken. And you could tell something in her broke. Uh, she wasn't speaking in, I, I don't know how best to describe this, but you know, Tessa has a certain like cadence to her voice, a certain way of speaking. Yeah. That yeah. day, it, it seemed like something else had, I don't know. I, I didn't, I don't know what happened to her. Like what? Like she was like um, dead inside? She came back yesterday. I hadn't heard her in a long time. I thought for a minute it wasn't happening anymore. I'm afraid uh, things like that just don't go away. It's sort of like a, a scar. We can do our best to cover it up, but when things like this happen, and get torn back open. In this case, she means to protect you. She means to harness that anger. Me and you, people like us, will always sort of be that 
monster. Nothing we can really do about it, I'm afraid. I I, I, I wish my, like, I, I've got pretty good memory when it comes to a lot of details, but... It feels like the world stopped, but also didn't. Decided to take matters a different route, you know what I mean? Like, put a fucking gun into a suspect's mouth and blast it type shit. So, there, so, so like she a, went from like the nice, sweet Tessa that we knew or that I knew, yeah, to crazy Tessa, I guess. I, shit, I don't yeah. know. Now the backdrop of all this is we had multiple investigations like running simultaneously, and one of them included a operation in which uh, we had an undercover unit over in Sanguine who is monitoring things, and part of that investigation uncovered. Dude, the and this kind of ties back nuts. to how we knew who blew up uh, Mishmer Opini. Uh, tied back exchanges of rockets, explosives, etc. They had no idea this guy was on the island. He was like in deep. And very select few of us had that information coming our way. We then were managed to tie it to a handful of individuals, uh, had multiple attempts to get them to stop the import. Because like, think about it, right? This is like another country importing weapons of medium destruction onto your soil, right? If they don't stop that shit, shit's gonna get real real. They wouldn't stop, and that ultimately led to war where we fucking destroyed the fuck out of them, strapped a bomb to a EMS and kicked that bitch into a room full of terrorists. Fast forward, bunch of people in jail, but leading up to that, there was a lot of not so much hope in Tessa getting the resolution I think she was looking for until perhaps the end of that war, right? You have to understand that whole thing spanned like five months. It wasn't just like one day we went over there and just started blowing up shit. There was a lot of development and a lot of it was like sympathetic, right? Like people didn't, uh, let me put it this way, Cornwood. The day after Sam Bass died, we had these fucking, I don't know what I, I want. Holy shit. Well, that explains why she would be willing to do something like that. Cause it was certainly not the woman that I knew as well. Yeah. I mean, I t I t I'll tell you, y y'all don't ever hear me cry. Okay. I cried. When I found out Sam Bass died, I did not, nobody had ever told me. You know, I remember Sergeant Bass, you know, he he FTO'd me. Hell, I, you know, he went from FTOing me to becoming one of my pupils years ago. Taught him damn near everything he, he knew eventually after he taught me what he knew. And then to, to hear that he died, it just, it took, it took a hell of a lot out of me. You know, you know, Ruth said, Ruth is the one who told me he died. And she kind of thought it just wasn't a big deal. And he was a part of leading the failed PD and how... No, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah, Ruth the failed PD. Me. No, hell no. Yeah, the failed PD is post sanguine when there was a bunch of terrorist sympathizers that were more hyper focused on reprimanding, you know, war heroes. I I remember. Holy shit! I had a fucking meeting with these idiots who sat there days after the war, questioning some of the dumbest shit instead of dealing with potential more threats. I mean, imagine we've got these people in prison for God knows how long. No one is interrogating them. No one is trying to get deals from them. It's just, well, time to find, like, all the people that brought us to war. Like, what are you on, crack? I want you to think about what that, a department full of terrorist sympathizers, like, what they would have produced over the next coming years when they actively were against stopping a terrorist state from exporting weapons. Uh, Sam Bassett was one of the few individuals that was willing to stand up for what yeah. was right. Holy shit. This is on Adam's Apple Boulevard. We just pull over on the side. I think it's on Adam's Apple. But she comes back around again. And she honks her horn at me a few times. I almost like taunting us. I'm like, okay. She knows I know. But here's the crazy part. She, this bitch, this cold-hearted bitch, Tessa Lamb, pulls out her phone and she calls somebody. I think she calls Kit Archer. Because I got a call from Kit. And she's talking on the phone. I hear her. She's talking about how... I mean, it's broken, right? I can only hear part of it from, from a distance. But she's saying about how... Oh, she, there's a police officer following her. And police officers had been uh, weird towards her that day. Uh, again, I think it's the day after. Maybe two days after. Police officers were starting to, you know be weird towards her or some shit and she was feeling incredibly uncomfortable <clears throat> incredibly uncomfortable like they were like like we were gonna like do some shit to her or something barrett can probably expand on this better did kit talk to you after whenever we were following around 
uh, Tesla for a few minutes. Yeah, she called me about it and said that uh, Tesla had been like kind of harassed throughout the day. And like our incident was like the last straw. Interesting how she didn't make a complaint about it until the guy who stabbed her, or excuse me, the guy who got stabbed by her. Uh, Well, apparently she did. Um, Oh, yeah. Just like, you know, didn't make its way to me until your situation. Mm.